All right, welcome back everybody. In this video, we're looking at how to use the transformation limit to limit the movement of the pupil as we squash down the eye. So the main principle behind this one, um, and this is one that we'll touch on in the next exercise, is to start getting rid of, rid of a, a few pegs inside of your rig. Um, for instance, we have this peg right here, the full eye front, which is being used for squashing down the eye and not necessarily affecting the pupil. Well, we can simplify that a little bit with the transformation limit, which will allow us to move inside the hierarchy without necessarily going through so many instances with uh, the amount of pegs that we have. So um, we'll be getting rid of this one uh, a little bit later on. It's going to be replaced by the transformation limit, uh, but let's just keep it for now to understand the difference between the two. Um, so I'm going to start right away by bringing in my transformation limit. We're going to bring that here. We're always, of course, connecting it above the object that we don't want to modify with the rest of the hierarchy. So I'm going to slide it in here and bring that over here. So connecting it to the right port, the limited transform port. And let's go inside of our layer properties. We're going to set to zero everything that we don't want to apply to our pupil. So when I scale this one here, what don't I want to get on my pupil? Well, I don't want it to scale. Right now, that's pretty much what's happening. When I scale it, the pupil scales along with it. So I can actually turn that to zero, both the scale, the skew as well. Um, I'll turn off the rotation as well and leave the translate for now, just so you can see um, what's going to happen right now, it is connected to the eye full master. So if I scale it, right now the pupil kind of goes off in a weird direction. This is only because we need to set the pivot point on our transformation limit. So always a good idea to check this out if you're unsure. Let's just show it with the show control right here. And let's bring that over to our pupil, to about the center. Terminator style, there we go. So we have our pivot point right here. Now if I try scaling the eye, that should move already a little bit better. Oops, let me just zoom in a little bit. You can see the pupil is kind of tracking slightly towards the bottom. If this is something that you, can, that you like, you can actually leave it there. This is because of the translate values that we have here. So if you don't want to get this little tracking right here, you can always set these back to zero. So I'm just gonna reset those right here and turn that off. So now if I move this over, I'm getting no movement in the pupil right here. Oops, let's just turn that off. I'm gonna make sure I reset everything. There we go. Um, and now what's going to happen if I go over to the top bag and scale those, I'm still getting no movement and no matter where I go, um, it is going to be limited indefinitely. So if I want, I can either go inside of my transformation limit right here and set a, um, a top peg that's going to uh, stop the limitation. So I can either go and put it in here or I can connect this little port right here, which we haven't discussed just yet, the force transform. So I would go and connect that to, uh, let's say the eyebrows master. So this one will uh, allow me to squash down everything and the eyes master, which is underneath that connection, will allow me to squash down both eyes at the same time without affecting the pupil. See, I haven't done the system already for this one, so this one is actually showing me what would happen if I did not do the system and I would have something like this. So I can just as easily go and copy that over to the other side. I want to make sure I don't have any uh, values in there or otherwise you can just grab that, go into the duplicate selected nodes right here, making sure I don't have any um, functions in there. I'm going to put that over here and just as well send that into the eyebrow master. So this one will allow me to squash down both eyes. 
and of course I must remember to remember uh, to go and position my pivot point right here in the center just in case I need to uh, to go and change something more specific and here we have it right here we can see the little tracking on the controller that our eye would do if we had not turned off the translation. Um, you can always go and change that value um, through time if ever you do need to activate it. That's the gist of it. And there you have it. Now we can get rid of this little peg here, which no longer serves a purpose. So we can remove that and it makes it that much easier to go and just move up the hierarchy directly to the peg without affecting the pupil and do the same thing over here. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let's get together again in the next video for the transformation limit, uh, how to set up the arms. See you there.